for all of my life that I have gone to doctors out of the different places that I've uh, that I have lived in or be homeless at I have never encountered medical gaslighting now I heard it happen I watch YouTube videos so I I know it exists I know medical gas- gaslighting exists when doctors try to brush you off and won't believe your sisters or whatever but yesterday I experienced the doctor from hell Literally, the doctor from hell. I wish I would have got his name. Thought I could put him on blast on this program. I never felt so depressed after leaving that appointment. I mean, just after I got a phenomenal experience by, uh, you know, the nurses and the uh, uh, the people that put my ID, even though they, they made one mistake in it and then I was bleeding from, um, from the IV, but they rectified it. Uh, the, and they, even the woman that took me, the, the sweet lady that took me to get the chest x-ray, the, the low back CT, uh, CT scan, um, and then the one that did the blood work, well, the, 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 it was the same one that did the uh, IV, but anyway, regardless, uh, <laughs> the ladies were phenomenal. It was just one jerk that swore me off of male doctors entirely. I often watch their YouTube videos, you know, some of the other uh, doctors that I've already watched, but I'll never, I'll never, in the rest of the time I have on this earth, I will never go to a male doctor ever again. And you know what he told me? And first of all, I was telling everyone that I see, I just moved here in my, I was thinking, now picture this, before my, I was in, Lamar Texas, I was in Galveston County. Okay. Then, March 1st, so this is why I missed Super Tuesday because I moved and see if anything, even after a day program, if I did win, I would have voted right after it. All I was doing would have, would have been voting and then come right back. But no, I moved to March 1st because of the, the, the terrible problem that I have with day program because they were going to make me come, go back to day program when I wouldn't. I'm already having bad experience. I'm getting abused, verbally abused. One person told me that they don't care about my back. And this idiot of a doctor, okay, this idiot of a doctor, you know what he told me? He told me that I should not even be in the ER unless I was dying today. Well, that that night, though. But unless I was dying today. That's what he told me. I will never forget it. He told me to not be in his ER until I was absolutely dying. Okay. Okay, so what if I had a broken bone or something like that? Okay. No. I had to, to according to his word. His word. He said it. I'm the one that heard it. He said, I'm not supposed to be in the ER until I was absolutely dying. This is not the place where I was trying to check for why I'm losing weight. And then I just found out I was 195 from... A few weeks ago, I was like 203, okay? I'm the one that's trying to find out what the heck is going on. I don't have an appointment to the rheumatologist until April 17 on the phone or telemedicine. I, I, I am so hurt of the treatment that I got from this idiot. That I will never go to the East uh, Houston, East Houston Medical Hospital and Clinic. For them to call themselves a hospital and a clinic is beyond me. Okay. Now, if they do have a, a, a lady doctor, which I'm sure they do, okay, I'll go to the clinic side of things. And I think I did see another building that they have. And they told me about the MR was in the other side of the bu- uh, another building. That they have. Okay. I'll go there. But. Once they ask for preference. Or what they. Because a lot of a lot of times. Doctors will ask you. Uh, what is your preference. Whether it's a, a female doctor. Or a male doctor. I'll get a female every time. They're much nicer. They have more better bedside manner. And they know how to treat their patients too. And they know how to talk to their patients. 
They know that I have post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. They know that. Then why the hell are they going to put more on me? And now I don't want to go to a male doctor. I almost swore off doctors last night. I almost swore off doctors. I was like, I'm never going to go to a doctor ever again. Ever again. But now I'm just sworn off male doctors. Like I said, I'll still watch YouTube videos, but I'm not going to go there after, after what I've been through last night. And I'm the victim. I'm the one that's trying to find out what the hell is wrong with me. Okay. I have pain in the left shoulder that suddenly popped up out of nowhere. Okay. Having back, low back pain. Losing weight. All of this crap. Yes, I have a, rheumato uh, a rheumatologist appointment. But like I said, it's not until April 17th. And when I left the, the, when I left the hospital, I left, uh, I left with, a, the, with a bad taste in my mouth. That was a taste in my mouth. Even the cab driver, the, the Uber lift driver said, oh, you had a good that time at the uh, good report at the doctor. I said, no, because I was I told him the same thing that I told when I was calling my prescriptions in to get my prescription, that I had a terrible time. And I told him, I told him what happened. I should have told him what that guy said to me. Don't. Be, you, you're not supposed to be in the ER unless you're literally dying. He didn't even say anything about no broken arms or whatever like that. He said, uh, uh, unless you're literally dying. I remember those words. Just like I remember the words about, you know, you're not going to go to college. You're not going to get married. You're not going to do, do that. And then I don't care about your back. In the middle, in front of an entire freaking van. This is unbelievably outrageous within the medical community. Gaslighting does happen. Medical gaslighting do happen. And it happened to me. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. I mean, wow. I've been attacked by a doctor verbally. Attacked by a male doctor verbally. I never want to go through that. Ever again.